everyone, my name is Tiffany. Welcome to Dining at Tiffany's. Today we're going to be making a broccoli cheddar party sandwich. I'm going to teach you how to make it from start to finish and we're gonna make some good food, have some good conversations, give me a great time. So I've loved cooking ever since I was young. So everyone always tells me, wow, Tiffany, you're so domestic. You're gonna be a great wifey someday. And I mean, I guess that's true. They say a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? But I mean, I feel like that applies to us ladies too. And nowadays everyone's always like, Make me a sandwich, you know? But today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a sandwich and one that can feed all of your friends too. So one of my favorite dishes to bring to parties is a party sandwich. So what does that mean? I will actually make a sandwich on an entire loaf of French bread. This way, you're gonna roll into the party with this giant sandwich and everyone's gonna think you're such a boss. It's going to be a broccoli cheddar sandwich. So it's kind of like, you know, a broccoli cheddar soup, but in a sandwich. It's almost like a bread bowl sandwich. It's gonna be really good. So I like to use um, raw broccoli. It's the best, it's the freshest, but if you can't get um, raw, you can get frozen, which is better than canned, because when it's frozen, they freeze it at its peak freshness. We're also going to add some garlic for some flavor. Um, I'm gonna teach you how to make the cheese sauce. I use milk when I make it, and I know like I can be a little bit lactose intolerant sometimes, and um, I found that when I use organic milk, it doesn't affect my stomach as much. You can also just use lactate as a substitute, but make sure that it's whole milk. So as you can see, this is a really simple recipe, less than 10 ingredients. If you want the full recipe, you can get it on my website at diningattiffany's.com. So now, let's make that sandwich. <laughs> that you do is get your broccoli ready. And so we're gonna flavor it with some nice garlic. So I like a lot, so we're gonna do about five cloves. And so the way that you get all the flavor out of the garlic is you take your knife and you smash it. So you put it on the flat side, ready, set, boom. Yeah, kind of attack them, right? <laughs> you just cut it lengthwise first. And then you're gonna do it the other way so you get tiny little garlic bits. So garlic's really great. It just adds such a depth of flavor to things. Most people love garlic and it's actually kind of healthy for you too. And then we're going to start on the broccoli. So what you want is you want some of the stems but not all of them since it's gonna go in your cheese sauce. So we take off this tall stalk part. And then you have all your little broccoli cheese. <laughs> okay. And so just cut it so that you take off that part that connects all of it. You don't want that part. Cut it into small pieces so that, um, I'll show you the sample size. So you can use some of the stems, but make sure it's very small. And you want them to be very small, almost as small as your garlic, so you can kind of see the comparison there. Yeah, especially on the stem part, since it's thicker, um, you want to do that really small, because it'll cook slower than the leaf part. I'm gonna teach you how to make a cheese sauce. It's really good and it's gonna go um, with the broccoli on the sandwich. And you start off by making something that's a very basic cooking skill called a roux. And a roux is basically a thickening agent that you people use in like gravies, cheese sauces like Alfredo, and we're gonna make one today. It's basically equal amounts of butter and flour. So you take your butter, put it in there. And so I'm doing about two tablespoons. And then we're going to do um, the same amount of flour. So you could either measure or you can eyeball it. I usually just eyeball. So put it in there. I think we need a little bit more. We're doing a little over two tablespoons here. Um, since we're making it for a sandwich, I'm making a much thicker roux because we want it to be more gooey than soupy. Do this is about like medium, medium high. And so you really want the butter to melt into the flour. And so it's really important that you cook out all of the flour. You can kind of break up the butter there so that um, you don't get that kind of powdery taste. And at the end, you're trying to make this nice little thickening agent. And you'll see like here, it's really starting to come together nicely. So just kind of keep it all in the same area. And so this is a roux, like, not like kangaroo, you know, like a Winnie the Pooh, but it's spelled like roux, like R-O-U-X, like La Roux, who sings like, you know, bullet proof. This time, baby, I'll be bullet proof. Oh, your roux is done. <laughs> nice. So um, once you do that part, um, don't let it burn over. Um, you can add the milk. It's usually one tablespoon to one cup, so I'm going to add two cups of milk um, since we have two 
tablespoons of each of the butter and the flour. So just put that in there. And then put the other one. And again, I like to use organic milk because it really doesn't hurt my stomach as much as regular non-organic milk. And then so next step that you do, you turn the heat back up to like medium high and you wanna whisk it all together. So you really want to incorporate all of that roux into the milk. So now that you see it getting really even in there, we're gonna turn up the heat to high and you're gonna um, kind of stir occasionally, but what we're waiting for is for it to bubble and that's when it's gonna activate the thickening agent and you're gonna get your nice sauce. Um, I like to add a little bit of salt to it just to bring out the flavors. Not You don't need too much because we're gonna add some cheese later and that already has salt in it. And you definitely wanna add some freshly ground black pepper. It'd be so good. And you always wanna use the fresh ground pepper, in my opinion, the um, the pre-ground black pepper kind of just tastes like sand. This is gonna have a lot more um, spice to it, a lot more oomph, and you, it's gonna make all of your dishes taste so much better. Yeah, so it should take about um, two to three minutes, maybe up to five minutes for it to start to bubble. Great, so now that it starts to bubble, um, just go whisk it one more time, and then we're going to take it off the heat. Next, um, we're going to add the cheese. So I'm doing two types of cheese. You can get pre-shredded. Um, it's it is cheaper if you get it and you shred it yourself, but if you're lacking time like I am, let's just use this kind. So um, this is a Monterey and Colby cheese mix. So it's nice kind of creamy, soft cheese. Kind of stir that in and you'll see it melt so nicely into your cheese sauce. Next, I also like, I really like to do sharp cheddar cheese in here. So it's really good. It has a very tangy flavor and I think it'll complement well with the Colby and Monterey Jack. So um, depending on what kind of cheese you like, you can always add um, whatever is your favorite, you know, but I like to do the really strong cheddar with a creamy cheese, but you can experiment at home. Let's see, you're getting some real nice cheese sauce and see how nice and thick and creamy that is. That's because we um, made that roux. So great, we just made our cheese sauce for our sandwich. Um, this is really great um, if you wanna make Alfredo, you can make dip out of this, it's really good. So definitely the roux to the cheese sauce is the way to go, it will get you far in life. That's done, um, let's go and work on the broccoli more. Cool, so now we're gonna get started on the broccoli. So um, all we're going to do is we're going to do a light saute. We want to cook the broccoli, but we don't want it to um, be too soft since it's gonna go in the sandwich. So the first thing you do is you add a little bit of oil to the pan, any light oil works, olive oil. I like to do about a medium, medium high. Um, and so you're gonna take that garlic that you chopped earlier Hit the oil really nicely. And you've gotta watch garlic when it's cut this small because once it burns, then it's just game over. You wanna make sure that your pan is hot before the garlic goes on. And so we're going to do this until um, they turn about light brown, which it seems like they're just about there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the broccoli right away. Yum. And then so you're just gonna mix the, um, Mix the garlic into the broccoli. And so um, once you've mixed around the broccoli, you really want what its purpose is, is to make sure and kind of take care of the garlic, making sure that they don't burn. So once it looks like um, the temperature from the garlic has um, cooled down, it's a good time to season it. You really want to season everything every step of the way. So you're going to add a little bit of salt. Mix that around a little more. Mm, you can kind of smell all that garlic broccoli goodness. They're so cute, they kind of look like little trees, huh? You're gonna eat them. <laughs> gotta have your fresh ground black pepper and it's gonna be real good. Okay, so they actually look about done. Now that they're dark green, like I said, you want them to ha not be too soft. You want them to have some bite to it since it's going in a sandwich. And so the next step is to just add that broccoli right into your cheese sauce. All of that good broccoli and garlic goodness in there. You just mix it all together. Yum. Mmm, doesn't that look good? 
See how it's kind of reminiscent of a um, broccoli cheddar soup, but it's a lot thicker. So let's go get that bread ready to make our party sandwich. And so we're actually gonna assemble it right where we're gonna serve it on a big cutting board. Generally, people don't have plates this big. How I want you to do it. First of all, whenever you cut bread, use a serrated knife. This is the one with kind of like the teeth because it really helps you get inside the bread. What I want you to do is um, cut it about a third from the top and I'll let you know why in a second. Um, I used a whole wheat bread just because I find that um, I don't feel as um, you know, sluggish after eating it, and I honestly feel like it has more flavor, but you know, everyone has their preferences. You're welcome to use um, the white French bread. Okay, so the reason why we're doing um, a third off the top is you really want to um, have a little bit of space for the cheese sauce to sit in so it doesn't spill over. So we're going to actually um, cut out about a half an inch, an inch um, into the bread. So don't cut down all the way. So if you can see, I'm kind of just gently pushing in there so we can um, pull it out and have a nice um, nice little boat for the cheese and broccoli to sit on. So do that on this side too. Just uh, pull out the inside of the sandwich, not all the way. So as you can see, we still have a lot of, um, we still have a good amount of bread there at the bottom. And this you can, you know, make it into croutons or something. Um, Personally, I'm probably just going to use this to clean the pan after and eat all that really good um, broccoli and cheese stuff. Next step is to, um, you're gonna ladle the cheese sauce into um, your sandwich. Okay, yum. So see how it's nice and melty but creamy at the same time. Okay, yum. I want to eat this right now. It's so cheesy, it's so delicious. And you know, if you really do miss the meat, you can always add, you know, just get some cold cuts of turkey or something or ham, that would be pretty good in here. Just pop the sandwich like so. And there you have it. You have a giant broccoli cheddar party sandwich. So you're gonna roll into your party and be like, hey everyone, look what I brought, isn't it awesome? And um, I don't know if you've been to a lot of potlucks, but sometimes you'll see like, there's a dish and no one's touched it, even though it's really good. It's just because nobody cut the first slice or they didn't put the right utensil in there. It's so simple, but then people won't eat it. So um, after you, don't cut it beforehand because I want you to really impress them when you walk in. So either bring your knife or make sure your friend has a knife and you'll cut at least one, two or three slices off the side so people kind of get the idea of what they're supposed to do. It may ooze a little bit, but it's gonna be a nice dramatic effect. <laughs> so again, with a serrated knife always. See, you got all that cheesy goodness. So you just, um, you can see all the broccoli and cheddar. It goes really nicely with the bread. So let's try it. Mm, that is so good. I cannot wait for you to try this. Um, again, this recipe is on diningattiffany's.com. Check it out.